Hi, I just want to share some thoughts with you regarding the parable of the meaners. This is the story from uh, Book of Luke when Jesus taught this. He said, it's chapter 19, verse 12. He said, A certain nobleman went to a distant country to receive a kingdom for himself and then return. And he called ten of his slaves and gave them ten minas and said to them, Do business with this until I come back. Now, this is a parable where the, the, Jesus shares a story that is similar to another parable he shared where he talked about the fact that um, a master gave talents, five talents, two talents, one talent. In this one, it's a little bit different. The purpose is slightly different, what he's sharing. And he says, I'm giving 10 minas to 10 different service, servants. So that each got one. So the difference here is that each servant gets exactly the same. In the other parable, um, each of the servants received different amounts, five, two, and one. So. What does it mean for me when it says they all receive the same? It talks to me about these giftings that God gave. It's not the individual giftings or responsibilities that might be vary because some people have different levels of responsibility, different callings, different giftings. And so the other parable where it talks about five, two, one might refer to the fact that you have a, a great responsibility. In the book of James, it says those who have uh, teach have greater responsibility and therefore they come under a greater judgment. There's, that they're judged differently because of their calling and because of what God has um, called them to, they have to respond and act in a way that rises to that. Now the opportunity they have is to do a great work, but they have a greater responsibility. This one, it's 10 servants, each one gets the same. So what I'd like to do is look at a number of things. Um, let's look at five things that um, that would um, be given to or every believer. Every believer has the same opportunity with these things. This is not the fact that, hey, you're slightly more talented or you have more responsibility, you have a greater level of gifts. Every one of us has the same level in, uh, in, these, in this parable. So let's just read it quickly. Verse 13, he called 10 of his slaves and gave them 10 meters and said to them, do business with this until I come back. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. And it came about that when he returned, after receiving the kingdom, he ordered that his, these slaves to whom he had given the money be called to him in order they might know what business they had done. And when and the first appeared, saying, Master, your mina has made ten minas more. Now, I want you to see that. He didn't say, I have made ten minas more. He didn't say, I've worked hard and I've got another ten minas here. He said... Uh, your mina that you gave me, I put it to work and it produced 10 more. Um, and he said to another, well, he said, well done. Um, you, you're faithful in a very little thing. I'll give you authority over 10 cities. Verse 18, the second came saying, your mina master has made five minas. And he said, to him, well, you are, you are to be over five cities. And he came to an, um, another saying, oh, sorry, another came to him saying, master, behold your mina, which I have put, kept put away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you because you're an exacting man. You take up what you did not lay down and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, by your own words, I will judge you, you worthless slave. Um, this last servant took his one mina and hid it. He didn't give it any opportunity to do anything. And he said, because I was scared of you, but he was just making excuses. Well, I want to look at the aspect of what are five things that God has given to us that Every believer has been given. You're not above or be, uh, below anyone else. This is not, um, you've got extra responsibility. These are five things that every one of us is responsible. And if we will put these to work, they will produce. The, the, we've got to get them out there. We've got to get them into the ground, if you like. We've got to, they're, they're like seed. We've got, to, we've got to work them. But if we just hold on to them, they can't do what they were designed to do. Each of these five things is designed to, to create fruit in your life. So if you will take all of these five things and actually begin to put them into action, you will find that they will work. You don't work. It's, that's, I really love this fact of what it says, um, Verse 16, the first pit saying, Master, your mina has made. Now, a mina, by the way, is worth about $20,000, about a third of a year's wage. So I'm, rough, I'm just doing an estimate of, say, $20,000. So it's a significant amount of money. It's not, you know, it's not a dollar or $10 or even $100. It's $20,000 in today's sort of currency. So you have to imagine, I was given $20,000 and I invested and used it and worked it. And the money made more money. 
And that's the, the key that the, the servant said, if I just put this out there, let the money work. If I hold it in, it does nothing, but if I put it out. So let's take a few things. Now, first of all, each of us has been given the word from God. Um, I don't get a special Bible. I don't get a different set of books than you do. Every believer gets the same word. Every believer gets the same written word spoken and anointed of the Holy Spirit that we can read and receive to us. Now, we all get the same word. How we work it is, is very different. How we use it. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says this. All, all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. There is in here everything that is needed for us to be fully equipped and be fruitful and do what we need to do. I want to challenge us in this act. It's not that we, every one of us gets a different Bible. You know, I, you know, I, I get the book of... Um, uh, Chronicles, you get the book of Psalms, you know, someone else gets the book of um, Corinthians um, and someone else gets the book of Ecclesiastes, that'd be a bit of a bummer, you know, and, oh, no, <laughs> I get the book of Job. No, we get the whole Bible and I'm thankful for that. God has given to us the word. And so I want us to, to challenge it. First of all, we all get the word. How do we use it? How do we, now, now how do, what does it mean when I say use it, do business with it? Well, you actually take it and you allow it to begin to work in your life. If you just, first of all, if you just leave it sitting on a shelf somewhere, um, you know, I, I remember hearing a story about um, a man who said, you know, I was really impacted by my father. He had a great respect for the word of God. He said one day someone, we had a family Bible that sat in the bookshelf and one day someone had gotten out and they'd put it down on the ground and my father grabbed it and he um, picked it up and put it on the, on the coffee table because, you know, the word of God was not to be put on the ground. And, um, and you think, well, well that's, that's a lot of respect. You know, that's wonderful. But you know what? The sad thing was that that man never opened the Bible, never read the Bible. He just had a reverential awe and, and, and it was like a holy book. But that's all it was. It was not effective to him. That mina was sitting there wrapped up in a handkerchief, not doing anything. He said, oh, I've got a special holy book and I keep it on the bookshelf and it's the most amazing book ever. You can, t you can call this Bible all the, the best adjectives that you can think of, holy and anointed and powerful and wonderful and, and uh, full of wisdom and truth. You know, you can, you can call it anything you want. And I don't think that scares the devil at all. And in fact, I think he loves it when we call it those things, but leave it unopened and not actually work in our lives. The other part is you can actually start opening it and reading it. But if you don't open it and read it, um, in the book of James, let me just read here. This is a real, this is actually one of the greatest keys um, for um, the word of God is that we, we need to receive the word of God as a, um, with a meek and open heart. If we don't do that, then um, this is James chapter 1, verse 21. Put aside all filthiness and all that remains in wickedness. In humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls. Um, that word uh, humility, it, it, it speaks of meekness, no resistance, without debate, not disputing. It's the, it's the word where you, you, you um, receive it and let it work into you. In fact, it's, it's the word, if um, the word implanted, is the word that it talks about in, in about being transplanted. You know, you can get an organ transplant and they've discovered that you take an organ from one person, put in another, and the body can reject that organ. The, it can say, no, that's not compatible. That doesn't work with me. And it can reject it. Even though it can be a perfectly functioning heart, the body rejects it. And they've had to learn how to, to work with that and deal with that so that the body will not reject a, an organ that is put into it. And when it's transplanted, this word of God, you can reject if you're not careful. You can take it and then you say, yeah, I'm not so sure about that. I don't like what it says there. I'm not so, you know, let me just think about that for a little bit. I'm not so sure about this, you know, forgiving my enemies. I'm not so sure about loving um, those that have done nasty things to me. I'm not sure about praying for those people that I don't like. I'm not so sure about giving and this sowing and this tithing. I'm not so sure about honoring those that are in leadership. I'm not so sure about obeying the, the, the rules of my 
government at times when I'm, you know, I'm not talking about when they tell you to stop preaching the gospel. I'm talking about when they start, say, don't drive over, you know, 60 kilometres an hour in this zone. And we say, oh, well, what are, who are they to tell me that? I'm talking that we take the word of God and that we reject it by sitting in judgment of it. It says, humbly receive it. So the first thing you need to do is realize this word is a mina to you and you need to work it. You need to let it get in you and change you and work in your life and bring wholeness and teaching. Remember 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, read it before. It will equip you. It will train you. It will prepare you for anything in life. But it's a mina. You've got to get it in and let it work. All right, let's go quickly to number two. So the word and number two, we've all been given the good news. The same message, the same message. I don't have a different gospel than you. I don't have a different gospel than anybody else who's a believer. I don't come and say, well, listen, my gospel is a little bit different. No, Paul actually said, if I come with a different gospel, I am to be condemned. I'm to be cursed. Um, in fact, let me just read that to you in the book of Galatians. So we all get the same, and if we and we start messing around with it, there's um, <laughs> yeah, we, we're in we're in big trouble. Um, and um, let me just. Uh, sorry, for me, I have to find this verse. Um, verse 8 of Galatians chapter 1. But even though we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. In other words, he said, I don't care if an angel turns up with a different gospel. There is no different gospel there to be accursed. So we all have the same gospel, the same message of Jesus dying for us on the cross, our sins being forgiven by his work. Um, it, it's it, the, the work of grace received by faith and the trust in the fact, making him Lord of our lives, king over everything that we do. Um, all those truths wrapped up into that one single gospel. We've all been given that. You've been given that message. I've been given that message. What are you doing with it? What am I doing with it? We need to take it and put it out there. Let it do its work. You know, you don't get people saved. The good news of Jesus Christ gets them saved as they receive that message and they open their hearts. The Holy Spirit will do the work of salvation. I don't get anyone saved, but I've got the responsibility to get it out there. It will not do anything wrapped up Oh, I want to be so careful with that gospel message. I'm looking after it. It's been doing, it, it's a sitting right close to my heart. And when Jesus comes again, I'll say that's the most be beautiful gospel message ever. He'll say, what did you do with it? And I said, well, my gospel message, I shared it and it made 10 more. It multiplied. It worked into people's lives. It brought fruit. So that's what God wants. And so I challenge you, get the gospel message out. Take opportunities to share it. You're not responsible for their response. Now, I know you need to do it in a w way of wisdom and grace so that you're not being offensive in the way that you do it. And the, you know, the gospel message itself is offensive, but you can also be offensive with your attitude and your judgmental attitude and your harshness. So you get your attitude right, you get your wisdom right, but you make sure that you don't feel responsible. Jesus said the soul went out to sow the word and it fell on four different grounds. One hard that didn't receive it, one that was rocky that didn't, um, it sh shot up for a while and failed. One uh, that had weeds and it, it choked the fruit. And then the fourth one, which was a good heart, and it sprung forth 30, 60, 100 fold. The same word had four different results depending on where it was going. You are not responsible for everybody's response. What you are responsible for is getting the word out to them, giving them the opportunity to receive the gospel. So that's your challenge. Take the meaner of the gospel and get it out there. Number three, um, his forgiveness. I just want to say here very quickly, freely you have received, freely give, for, freely give, freely give. Forgiveness, forgiveness is a gift that you have received. It's a mina. We've all been forgiven, but we must take that and then give it out. Use it. Work the fact that you've been forgiven. Work that into an attitude and a lifestyle of forgiving others. You can do that. You can take the forgiveness that you've been given and dissipate and share that with others. There's many parables, I won't go into them now, where Jesus talks about the fact that people who have been forgiven, who refuse to give others, that is a terrible, that is a terrible crime against God. That's a terrible um, attitude to take. You have been give, forgiven for so much, you should be freely giving that. So work your forgiveness. Think about that. How can I get my forgiveness out there by forgiving others? It multiplies the, the meaner and gets it to actually bear fruit in your life. Number four, 
Uh, let me just turn to the book of Romans. And um, talks about um, verse 5, Romans 5, and hope does not, not disappoint because the love have, of God has been poured out within our hearts. The love of God has been poured out within our hearts. It's been, we have all received the meaner of God's love. God loves us all. We all have received love. It's the most precious gift uh, to be able to say, I am loved. I am loved with a love that is um, complete, full, nothing missing, nothing broken love, a love that is um, beyond my wildest imaginations love. I've been loved. I have that love. That love has been shed abroad in my heart. Now, I challenge you, that's a gift that every believer has. We all get the same love. But we should turn and take that and use that to love others. Think about someone that you can actually show an act of love to this year, um, today. Somewhere, go somewhere and think, how can I show them love? How can I be kind to them? How can I do something for them, serve them, minister to them, give them a kind word, reach out to them? Um, whatever it needs, let me show some love to someone. Because the love that you've been given, if you just bottle it up and just receive it and say, that's beautiful, I'm the most loved person in the world, and it stops there, God will come and say, hey, how, what did you do with that meaner of my love? Oh, he said, I loved your love. I just held it close. But you know what? I discovered, oh, I didn't want to go and give it to someone else because you never know what they'll do with it. But me, I'll just hug it close. No, you get that love out there. Let the love work. And last one, number five. Um, let me just go to Mark 16. And um, verse 20, and it says, And when, that, when they, the disciples, went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. Do you see? The, while the Lord worked with them. Um, in Second Corinthians, let me just find a verse here. Um, we Second Corinthians, where... Uh, verse chapter 6 verse 1 and it says and working together with him that's with jesus with god we also urge you not to receive the grace of god in vain paul had saw his he worked with god he was working in synergy he, he was working connected with him jesus went about working with him i just declare that god will work with us he gives us a mina of saying i'm with you i'll help you i'll go with you um, each one of us has that we have Jesus with us to help us. And if we say, oh, that's really lovely, Jesus, just sit here with me and um, I'll just, I don't, I don't want to do anything that could um, embarrass myself or I don't want to make a mistake. I don't, want to, I don't want to mess this up. We'll just sit here real quiet and enjoy each other's company. Jesus said, I came to be with you so that I could go out and help you and be part of your life. I challenge you today, use the help of God. Take the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says the Holy Spirit he has come to empower us so we can be his witnesses. And um, the Holy Spirit, which is the presence of God with us, is in us, working in us, and will uh, anoint us and help us through everything we do. So we've all been given the help of God. We've all been given the, the presence of God, the, the companionship, the, the, the work of God working with us. Is We've all got the same. What are you doing with it? And so there are five things that... Um, God has challenged me to say, you've been given the word, you've been given the gospel, you've been given uh, forgiveness, you've been given his love, and you've been given his presence, his ever-present help there. Let's work those five things. Let's get them out. And this is what I was saying. You don't have to make them work. You just have to get them out there. This is the, the, the parable is all about getting them out. All you have to do is take those five and actually just... Put them out there. You're not responsible for making them work. This is what I'm trying to encourage you. You're not there to say, well, they better work. Doesn't matter. You just get them out there. Let them do the work. Let the gospel message do the work. Let the word work. Just give it freedom to work. Let your forgiveness, as you forgive others, let that work. As you love, let that, just that love will do its work. And as you take bold steps, Jesus will back you up and you will find him working amongst you and doing miracles because he will do his work. You don't have to make him. You don't have to do, it's not your power that you're trying to get to work. It's working these gifts. So that's my thought to you. Take those five things and just get them out there. 
use this time as an opportunity to get those meaners into the work. And I love, let me just finish by reading that, that, um, uh, that verse again, when it said that, um, he said, verse 13, he gave them 10 meaners and he said, do business with this. I love that kind of, do bit, get them out there, do business. And, um, and, and then he called them, he said, you wanna know what business they had done with his meaners. So let's do business with the things that God has given us. Um, trust that's been a real encouragement to you. Um, and just let me pray for you. Father, I thank you that as your people take the gifts that God has called them to, the, 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 the word, the forgiveness, the love, these things that you have given them, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, let them do business and I pray for a great harvest. I pray for someone watching right now that, Lord, that you'll give them great wisdom right now and they'll think there'll be ideas coming to them as they're watching. They'll say, you know what, I'm going to ring that person. I'm going to share something out of love or I'm going to forgive that. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to write a letter of forgiveness to this person. I'm going to get my gifts out there and I'm going to see what God does with that. God bless you.